Today, we're gonna go and mount the seats. Not seats, but the tracks, I guess. But that's the next step to getting the seats in there. Uh, once the tracks are in, we're probably gonna tackle some wiring and everything before we put the seats in, because then the seats would just be in the way to do everything. What my game plan is, is to measure how the tracks hit on the seats, measure the distance between the tracks. That'll give me an idea of what I need to do with the tracks, take the seats off the tracks, jig them up, put them where they need to be, and then take a look at uh, what we gotta do with changing the feet situation to make it mount to the truck. With the tracks out of the truck, we can see some of the issues right off the bat. Some of the good things are is when I put the seats on the tracks, I made sure they hang over the outside equally. So I know that those both hang over two inches from the edges of the seat foams down to the edges of that. So that's good so we can keep the tracks centered left to right. I measured from here to here on the tracks themselves got 25 inches so I know how far I need the tracks apart so all that's nice what my thought is is I will mount something to the tops of the tracks so that I can put them both in there align them like that figure out the spots for the mounting problem is when I took these seats out I wasn't thinking that they should both be in the same exact position I do think I got them pushed all the way forward because that was the easy way to get the bolts out but you can see they're not at the same tilt so I'm going to go and uh, kind of hot wire jumper these motors to get them in the same position so that they do line up so that we can address the feet issues when I say feet issues this is what I'm looking at these two back ones are sitting on the table and here on the ends there's enough room to run my hand under all the front seem to be pretty flat across but that doesn't mean it's going to fit my floor because it has kind of a crown to it so we're probably going to have to adjust them all but until we can get them all stationary lined together know they're flat across the top we can't even do that so first thing let's crank up the motors and get a flat surface Got the tracks all the way up, front and back, and all the way forward. Now you can see they line up, so that'll be good. Uh, I gotta get the gaps from here to here, 25 inches. We're gonna clamp this to the front, clamp that angle iron to the back, maybe another support in there, but just try and get that rock solid and square so it's not racked. And then we should have one big piece that'll be the right distance apart that we can go and put in there and then we can adjust how much it needs to be rised, lowered, so on. Okay, let's take a look at what's actually happening here. I realize a lot of you are never going to go through the trouble that I did with the actual seat itself, but you may be with the tracks. So here's how I've aligned them. Um, you know, so if it helps you, fantastic. The tracks, we determined how far apart they need to be based on my seat. You would have to do the same for yours. That's what this support here is, is to keep them the right distance. I figured out that the tracks, the front mounts, mount to the existing cross piece that's in the cab pretty well if I space them with a 2x4. That 3.5 inches actually puts them right in the middle of that brace. So that's pretty good. 
So I cut some little blocks to go up against the back braces and the back cab support. That gets me front to back pretty easily. And then all we're facing is side to side, which I just measured from the inside of the jam to the frame and made sure it was the same on both sides. So now we got where the tracks need to be. Now we need to get them level. The insides of both the tracks are the high points, which I figured it would be because the cab's got a crown to it. So that's the side we're going to work off of. We're going to try and get that inside level first, and then we'll figure out what we need on the outside. So since we've figured out the placement, I can go ahead and mark the center holes and the outside holes. Yeah, probably not the outside holes. We're just going to go with the center holes for now so that we can drill holes for those and put bolts in there. Then we can align front to back on the inside, then we'll work to the outside. That'll all make more sense here in a minute. Put the bolt in this back one. This one here is the longest leg. So that's the one that we're going to work off of. We're going to level this front to back first. And like I said, it's not too far out. One washer in the length of that gets us level. So probably take like two up front here. That's about right. So we're looking about two washers to get that. So we'll go ahead and throw a bolt in there and then we'll look at this side. All right, that was pretty easy. Um, you know, we're going to do something besides two washers in there. I'd like to have a little bit bigger footprint. Probably going to cut something, um, you know, out of a piece of strap like this to essentially make a big washer. But that's fine for. Our purpose is right now trying to level it so we're touching the side bubble right there but this is a very organic thing we have happening here it's not gonna be perfect that's plenty good enough but now left to right is where we're gonna have to really make up a difference because that is a large gap you know we're looking at an inch and a half probably riser to make that happen so i think i'm going to play around um, and just kind of space it up with some blocks maybe some wood shims to get that level right and then we'll figure out what that distance is and how we want to tackle that well after shimming this around and putting different things in there it turns out that these two fit had exactly an inch and a half so if I just had inch and a half spacers on these they would line up so I don't see the sense in over fabricating something when I could get you know a piece of inch and a half tubing to put in there that would make a nice clean uniform riser to get this side up and then you know just use longer bolts all the way down through so I'm gonna run to the store and we're going to see what our options are when I get back. Well, after a month-long trip to the store, I finally made it back. It didn't take me that long into the store. A lot of you have expressed concern on where I've been. I appreciate that. Where I've been on the past month? Holding this sign. Working on cars is just a hobby of mine. My day job, I work at a union shop, and we had been out on strike. During that time, I'm not making any money, so therefore I had to find other work in the meantime to make sure this roof stays over my head. So, projects like this got pushed to the back burner while I'm dealing with different things with the union and different side jobs to make sure that I still have some income rolling in. So... That's where I've been, and we're back, thankfully. Um, nobody ever wants to be on strike. It's a very stressful time, and 
It just wasn't time for this. So, I did go to the store and didn't find really what I was looking for. But I've got something else in mind that's going to work in its place. Where we left off before my brief hiatus was figuring out the risers on this side. We've already got the inner sides of the tracks mounted and those seem to line up pretty good. Taking a look on the outsides though, we had some difference because there's an arch in the cab. I thought that an inch and a half was going to be the thickness that I wanted for that. However, just out of curiosity, I threw the seats on the tracks to see what they actually look like. I'm glad I did because that was giving it to where the seats were crowning in. There. That lines up with the level, but just because it lines up with the level didn't mean that that's how it needed to be. And I'm really glad that I did that because I'm coming to find that three quarters of an inch is actually the distance I need to raise these on this side. Is it perfect? No. Um, but that's a lot closer than what the inch and a half was. So we need three quarter inch risers. I had originally thought of going to like a square tubing, just cutting it and doing that. But after pricing square tubing, the cheap guy inside of me couldn't do that. So we're going to do something old school. At least it's old school for me. There's a lot of you in Canada that watch this, so I'm sure you're doing a similar version or know somebody that has with hockey pucks. What I'm talking about is taking a piece of pipe, we're going to cut it to length, and we're going to weld a washer on each end and just make spacers like that. I've done this before when I was younger and I was poor and couldn't afford a body lift kit. So we made our own with cutting pipe and welding washers getting longer bolts. The reason I say the Canadian thing is I've heard you guys using hockey pucks, drilling holes, longer bolts, same concept. But that's what I'm going to do for the risers. Um, that should give it a relatively clean look and get us exactly the three quarter inch. And I already had the pipe and the washers were like 25 cents a piece. So we're in it like nothing. Here's what we ended up with. Just pretty much a three-quarter inch spacer made out of a piece of old pipe and a couple washers. But that fits in there just like that. Now with looking at it, the seat looks good. Um, it looks level. I can't explain why it looks better not level than what it did with the level but hey sometimes you just got to put it together and see i guess so all we got left is throw the bolts in there um and then the seats are pretty well mounted so well now that the seat project took all winter all winter we started this project at the first frost it's 55 outside and sunny my neighbor cut his grass all winter long that took so we're switching gears Get it running. 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 First thing I need to do to make that happen, take care of the exhaust. Reason I have to do the exhaust first is because we got to put the gas tank back in here. The gas tank before was mounted to the car body. We don't have that body anymore, so now we got to make a new mount. In order to make the new mount, i got to see where the exhaust is because I'm not going to make the exhaust fit around the gas tank when I could have made the gas tank fit around the exhaust. Simple enough. That's where we're headed. Getting the exhaust squared away. Get the wires connected up. Get the gas tank in. Should start. Hopefully. Anyway, that's where we're headed. Sorry for the big break. Um, like I said, had a lot going on. Still got a lot going on trying to catch up. So, Videos are probably going to still be here and there, but we'll try and get back into a rhythm just like we were before my life got crazy. Like always, thanks for watching the videos. We'll see you next time.